G'day. In these videos, we're using PsychoPy and Python to create an auditory psychophysics experiment. We are building things from scratch with no previous assets like sound stimuli or routines. And we're starting to build up step by step um, quite a sophisticated experiment. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos and you've stumbled in on this one, I suggest um, you go back to the first video and get an idea of the sorts of things that we're asking um, and making in this video. Um, there's about five or six videos, some of them are quite long, but if you watch those videos up until now, you should be able to follow along and create a, a bare bones program um, that should create a stimulus, play a stimulus, and also control the timings, as well as the number of trials, and also do the file saving. Well, we've started to do the file saving. Okay, so go back and watch those videos and then come back here. If you want to just run on and see if you're interested in this sort of stuff, hey, um, welcome on board and uh, we'll start. What we're doing in this video is we're starting to think about the design, the actual mechanics of the psychophysics experiment. There are so many options out there. You know, we've got all these papers. So like I said in the first video, it started in 1860 or 1870 by Fechner, who started to think of these ideas. And, you know, it sort of got really really um, interesting in the late 60s, early 70s, when they started to go, hey, we can apply some sophisticated techniques here to really get at answering this idea of thresholds. So that's the sensitivity of the hearing system to sound. What we're doing in this experiment and in, in our program is we're loosely basing our experiment on this paper by Michael Tan, uh, Don Robertson and Jeff Hammond. Uh, published in 19, uh, sorry, 2008. So Mike, uh, Don and Jeff, these are some guys that I um, worked with and I did my PhD at the same time as Michael Dan did his PhD. We did it in the auditory lab at UWA in Perth. So I was one of the subjects for these experiments and so um, I, can, I can remember a lot of the things that um, Mike designed and a lot of the, the, the approaches that he used. Okay, so anyway, we're loosely basing it on this 2008 paper. What we're essentially doing is presenting a very brief tone burst in either observation window one. So this is time on the x-axis, I think you can see that. And basically there's two time windows. The sound will be presented in either time one or time two. And then what happens at the end of that trial is the subject is asked to say, okay, was it in one or was it in two? They have to choose. So because there's two choices to pick from, this is called a two alternate forced choice test, or two AFC. This is important because it means that when the subject no longer hears the signal or no longer is able to sense the stimulus, they're going to have to guess. And so that means that the percentage correct will drop to 50% because that means that they're, they, they're just going to guess, oh, I think it's one, I think it's two. They have to choose one or two. They can't say, I don't know, because then that's going to be a three interval force choice test or a three alternate force choice test. Right, so here we go. We're going to start at 50%. And if the, the stimulus is loud enough, right, they're going to get it correct 100% of the time. So if we have a look down a little bit further at some of, the, some of the functions that are created from this experiment, here we go. We have percent correct on the y-axis, and it goes, remember, from 50% to 100%. And here we have the intensity. So we're doing sound experiments. So this is dB. I think it's A weighted here. So as we see, the individual um, subjects here, now this dotted line is the uh, modeled psychometric function that Mike put in there. And what we can see is that we just follow one of these data, uh, data series and we see that for uh, low intensity, they're getting at chance, the subjects, but then we follow this up at um, slightly higher frequency, uh, sorry, intensities, they're starting to become a lot better and they get a higher percentage correct, okay? So here we go. This is what we want. We want to go from 50% up to 100% by changing the intensity of our stimulus. So this leads us to the question, well, 
how do we decide when to change the stimulus intensity? Do we do it on every trial or do we have to make sure that the person gets a certain number correct before we change the stimulus intensity or do we just um, arbitrarily pick some intensities and then say, okay, we're going to present some at this intensity, some at this intensity, and we're going to randomly select okay, our intensities and present them in a random order. What we can do is we can do what's called a staircase method. And here is um, a figure from the Psychophysics Wikipedia webpage. And this is the approach that we're going to take. For these first lots of experiments, we're going to try and define the threshold. And that means at a certain point, our subject is going to go from being able to hear it to being able to, to not being able to hear it. Okay, And so this is called the threshold. And so we're going to have to adjust our intensity of our signal until the person starts to get them wrong. Okay, so what do we have here? We have stimulus intensity x in the uh, y-axis. So this is taken from Manuel Kuhner. And we have trial number in the y-axis. And what we see here is if the subject got the um, time correct, so let's say we presented it in the first window and they said it was in the first window, then that's a correct response. And we'll say the stimulus was detected. So they got the first one correct. And so what in this case is, what happens is we turn the sound down a little bit. So as you can see, it goes from 11 down to nine. And then they test it again in the next trial. The subject again got it correct. And so in the very next trial, they went down to seven. And then the subject got it correct again. And so they went down to five. The subject got it correct. And so they went down to three. Okay, and then what happens is the subject got it incorrect. So let's say we presented it in the second time window, but the subject went, ah, uh, it was in the first window. So that's incorrect. So what, we've, what we do now is we increase the intensity. And so in this case, instead of increasing it by two, they've increased it by one and they've tested it again. They got it incorrect. So they increase it again by one. The subject got it incorrect. And so therefore they increase the intensity by one again. Ah, they got it correct, good. So what they do now is they've shifted from changing the intensity on every single trial to now, you'll notice the subject has to get two correct before they change the intensity of the sound. So this one here is correct, this one here is correct, and so they got the two correct, and so therefore we drop the step size of the stimulus become softer by one. They get the first one correct, they get the second one correct. Okay two are correct, we're going to go down again. And so the step size to go down is one. And then, oh, they got it incorrect. And so they only ever need to get one incorrect before they increase the intensity. So they got it incorrect, they go up, they got it incorrect, they go up. Ah, they got it correct now. So that's the first time they got it correct. They keep it at the same intensity. They got it correct a second time. Ah, so that means we've got two out of two correct. We're going to drop the intensity down again. Ah, they got it incorrect. So therefore, we're going to increase the intensity. They got it incorrect again. We're going to increase the intensity. Ah, they got it correct. This is one of two. This is two of two. Correct. We're going to drop the intensity by one. One of two. Two of two. Drop the intensity down again. One of two. Two of two. Drop the intensity down again. One of two. Ah, they then got it incorrect. But then on the 25th trial, they've stopped for this particular experiment. But with this pattern, you should now be able to predict what the next stimulus would have been based on the pattern of responses. In this case, because they got it incorrect, it would have gone up on the 26th trial, it would have gone up to five. So this is quite a complicated picture, but it tells us everything that we need to know for this style of adaptive staircase measure. It's called a transformed up-down method using a simple up-down rule until the first reversal. Now there's a lot of information there. Let's go through this step by step. First thing we need to say is for the very first trial we start loud. Okay and then what we do to get down to threshold is we basically 
just basically say, if they get it correct, we go down by a lot. If they get it correct, they go down. If they get it correct, they go down. And then at some point, they're going to not be able to hear that. It's okay if we go further than the threshold. Because what we're going to do is, we've say the threshold's here, we're going to go past that threshold, okay? And then we're going to come back up over that threshold. The idea being is that over time, if we calculate the reversals or where we go up and down that threshold, okay, we're going to arrive at the psychometric threshold. And so here, for this initial falling phase, we're going to have a one down, one up approach. One down means they only need to get one correct for the stimulus intensity to go down. So one down, one down, one down, one down. Okay, now they got it incorrect. So we jump off the one down, one up to now a two down, one up. So they now, after they've got the first one wrong, they now need to get two out of two correct in a row. And that's what we see here. Two correct, it goes down. Two correct, it goes down. Ah, they got it incorrect. And every time they get it incorrect, it will the step size will increase. Ah, here we go. What do I mean by the step size? Have a look at the difference in intensity between each successive trial. In this first phase, it's the step size is two. So step size down is two. And then step size when we go up in intensity is one. Okay. Now you'll say to yourself, well, why haven't they changed the intensity here? So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth trial. Why haven't they changed the intensity? Remember, this person has to now get two correct in a row for that intensity to increase. Now that we're on to the two down, one up part of our experiment, so they have to get two correct before it goes down, we are now have shifted into a one step. So that means that the stimulus is going to decrease by one and not two, like we did at the start. The reason we do this different rule at the start is we basically get down close to threshold as quickly as possible. So we don't waste a lot of time and a lot of the attention and awareness of our subject you know, away from threshold. The point of this experiment is to get close to threshold and then to see how the responses shift as we go above and below the threshold. We're going to basically create the rules in Python and PsychoPy, mainly Python. We're going to create the rules very similar to this transformed up-down method in that. From now on, our subject will need to get two correct for the stimulus to become softer. The subject will only ever need to get one incorrect for the stimulus to become louder. All right. We're also going to put in this falling phase at the start. So for the first trials, until they get the first one wrong, we're going to basically quickly go down. So the step size at the start is going to be a lot higher than the step size after they get the first one wrong. See how we're reversing around? So we're going down and then we're coming back up. So we've made a reversal. That's called a reversal. And then you see here at R1, we've gone from going up and staying the same, and now we're dropping back down again. So we've gone up and now we're coming back down again. That's another reversal. And then we're going down and then they're gonna get it wrong and then we're gonna come back up again. So what we're going to do is basically add up all of these values here and divide by the number of reversals. And that's gonna give us our threshold. Basically, we're looking for the midpoint between R0, R1, R1 and R2, R2 and R3. Because at some point there, the person's not able to hear that anymore, the stimulus anymore. So I think I've yacked enough at you at the, uh, for this video. This is the approach that we're going to take. Two alternate force choice test. The response has to be one or two. If the subject gets it wrong, they're going to be at 50% chance, or 50%. If they can definitely hear the signal, it's going to be at 100%. So two AFC, two alternate force choice test. The other thing that we're going to do is two down. They have to get two correct to go down in intensity, and one up. Every time they get it wrong, we're going to increase the intensity. And we're also going to have 
for this experiment, we're going to have a symmetrical step size, which means that the amount that we go down is going to be, say, 3% or 5%, and the amount that we're going to go up when they get it wrong, so louder, by the same amount, 3% or 5%. We can change those two things, and that's been shown to get us a very good approximation of threshold very quickly. We're going to start simple. We're going to keep the step size the same. All right, so I'll leave this video here. In the next video, we're going to run back into our Python program and we're going to start to put in these rules. Two AFC, uh, step sizes, two down, one up rule. Okay, so we'll leave this video here and I'll see you in the next one. All right, hang in there.